And I'm Ken Barons on the uh, Ken Barons Show, and I have on the line a uh, shady card dealer and a card, well, a card sheet, actually. Uh, <laughs> and a very a very fine actor, too. Richard Crenna, good morning to you. Good morning, Ken. How are you? Really good. I, I really enjoy your work. I have to say that right off the bat. Well, I thank you very much. That's nice to hear. And uh, unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember you when you were uh, a lot younger also. <laughs> happens, doesn't it? Sure does. You turn around and everybody else has gotten so much older. Yeah. <laughs> you look at yourself on film. That's a great bit, by the way. Richard Crenna is in a movie that's currently in town at the Eastland Cinemas called The Flamingo Kid. And one of the greatest scenes, I don't want to give it away, but I guess all well, won't hurt to give one away. No. Great bit. This takes place, what, in the 60s, I guess? 63. When people are really excited about remote control television. And, of course, you were really trying to influence Matt Dillon, making him think that you were really hot stuff. Oh, impressing him, by all means, with all my possessions. Like the uh, television set with a remote control on it. And, of course, here we see a clip or two of some of the television shows that happened to be on during that era. And, lo and behold, who pops up but uh, Richard Crenna as Luke and Walter Brennan as uh, Amos McCoy, right? Right. Yeah, that was a joke that, uh, <laughs> that our director, Gary Marshall, was playing on the... Uh, he didn't... Uh, tell me before we shot the scene that that was going to come on the screen so that as I was clicking it suddenly came up and I stopped and I said Gary this is silly you can't have me sitting here watching myself on television he said well you know nobody if, if they know that you played Luke McCoy they might be slightly amused by it and if they don't they won't care so let's leave it in so yeah. it, it stayed in the picture it's one of those great little bits uh, I think I wouldn't put it on the same class maybe with uh, Alfred Hitchcock making an appearance in every one of his films <laughs> no that's true <laughs> but, but, but it, that may be you know let, now, we may be giving a, 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 a may be wonderful for your for your listeners because this may be a, a, a question in trivial pursuits at some years uh, down the line yeah well, who watched himself on television in a motion picture and it would be richard Crenna. there you go you know so many people are playing that game now they're going to change it to common knowledge rather than <laughs> i think you're right <laughs> trivial pursuit you do get hooked I, I felt that i'd finally made it when i was the answer in the, uh, on two cards in trivial pursuit uh, general trivial pursuit and then one in, in silver screen Oh, really? Do you remember the questions? Well, one was who played Luke McCoy on The Real McCoys. Okay. That was in the, in the regular trivia set. Uh, and the, the second one in Silver Screen was who played the part of Captain Collins in The Sand Pebbles. Oh, yeah. That was a great movie, huh? That was a wonderful film, yeah. Yeah. It really was. It, uh, it was one of, the, one of the great experiences of my life. It was my first major starring role in a, in a motion picture. And, of course, uh, we shot it all on location in Taiwan and Hong Kong. And I was away from... Uh, from Hollywood and my home for 11 months and took my family with me. All three of my children were there for the full term and we had a terrific time. You know, you make acting look easy. Well, And uh, it's, it's not by any means. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I kick myself for that because, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, you sometimes, uh, uh, most actors, of course, we, we go through life feeling that we're being ignored and unappreciated and, and uh, unfulfilled. And, uh, uh, you know, it's always nice when somebody says you don't let the acting show. But every once in a while, you have to let it show a little bit. Mm -hmm. The, uh, well, the examples are just numerous. I was, and the different characters you've played. This is the first one I can really think of where uh, you are really a distasteful guy. Uh, well, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, Phil Brody is kind of an unpleasant fellow when you, uh, when you uh, consider him at face value. But he's kind of pathetic, too. I think... Uh, uh, I hopefully uh, uh, gave enough subtexture to the character that when people walk out of the theater, they're going to have some uh, sympathetic understanding, certainly, mm -hmm. of, uh, of what motivates Phil Brody, because the, the man, the poor man, is, is, uh, is truly a facade. There's, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing beyond his silk shirt. And you know what's interesting? a lot of hurt. You know what's interesting, too? When, you, when we first meet him, I think he's kind of nice. And when you're sitting in the sports car talking with, uh, with Matt Dillon, uh -huh. there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. The people that make the money in the world are the salesmen. Uh -huh. You know, I'm starting to buy some of this stuff. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and then later on, we find out that uh, you don't really care you well, know, it's, um, it, it was, about it was, him. It was fun to play the role because uh, that sort of character is always an interesting kind of character to play in the fact that, uh, that the people in the story are learning about you at the same time uh, that the audience is learning about you. I always love to reveal my character on screen. Uh, it's, it's, I think, one of the virtues that uh, that I've had as an actor is, is the uh, is the fact that I have been able to to play such a, a wide variety of roles that at this stage of the game, people really don't know who I am. It's hard to put a label on a Richard Crenna. When they go to a movie, they don't know if they're going to be seeing a guy wearing a black hat or a white hat. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a tremendous advantage for an actor. It really is, because it, uh, it enables you to... Uh, 
to do so many things that you might not be able to do otherwise. I like it when you pop up in things like uh, a <clears throat> really great movie I thought was Body Heat. Oh, yes, thank you. And uh, the role that you played there was, again, different. And not a not a really super big part in that movie, but it was so it was so nice to see you all of a sudden on, on screen playing that kind of a character. Well, I'll tell you, Ken, that's, that's one of the things that I've learned in this business uh, through the years. It's not the amount of time that you spend on the screen. It's almost... Uh, uh, you can liken it to the time you spend with your children. It's the quality time. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, what I really look for when I'm when I'm looking for a role or when a role is offered to me, I look uh, at, the, at the script not in terms of how many lines I have or how many scenes I have, but do I have one good scene? Because uh, that's all you really need in a film uh, is one good scene. And if that scene is there, uh, the character itself is going to make some impression. And, and that's what I look for. And, and Hopefully, have been able to find. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, probe your mind as to how you actually go about it, but there are different theories and different techniques for actors, aren't there? Um, well, I guess really, I, I, I would have to say I'm, I'm uh, pretty much of, a, of uh, in the mold of Walter Brennan in the sense that, uh, um, uh, and that's a pretty good league to put myself. Well, in I'll there. tell you, I'm, Walter Brennan, that had to be a thrill working with him. Well, I would he think. was, he was just, uh, to my way of thinking, he was one of the premier uh, motion picture film actors of all time. He yeah. was just. I think it's a natural gift. I think some people just have it, and it's easier for them, maybe. Well, I, I, I think you're right. I, I, I do think that, that there are people, I mean, uh, we all know, uh, each of us in our own experience, in our private experience, know, know friends of ours that are hysterical, mm -hmm. that we love to be with, the guys at the country club that make you laugh every time they open their mouth, the ladies that, uh, that always uh, sound like Irma Bombeck and say the right thing at the right time, and... Uh, you know, there there are people who come into the world with a, with a special knack for for communication. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it just takes that other person. Have you ever met somebody that said, "You got to meet this guy. He's great. He's funny. He's the greatest guy to be around." You meet him, and nothing. It's like those. <laughs> it's like those two people hit it off. And yeah. you know, you can maybe be funny around people, but when you get in front of the camera, then maybe some people don't have that. Well, that's right. Uh, there there are there have been any number of uh, of, uh, of friends of mine, uh, good actors, really. Uh, who for some reason have never been able to transmit to the screen the personal charm that they, that they have in a room or in a, in a relationship or even in a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a mechanism that, uh, that just doesn't allow them to release that. It, it, it seems like there's a blockage there. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of people, not a lot, but uh, I think probably in your own experience, you can, you can think of two or three actors that you always thought were very, very good and you always wonder why it never quite happened for them. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that happens in front of a camera. There are, there are people that the camera just loves, uh, that, uh, that it's almost impossible for them to stand in front of a camera without looking beautiful. There are some women, for example, that when you see in the makeup room in the morning, uh, you know, you go, ah! <laughs> and and uh, 10 yeah. minutes later, you see them on screen, and they just take your breath away. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, those are all intangibles. Nobody can really say why that happens or how it happens. But uh, I do believe that, that some of us are more fortunate than others. And, uh, you know, that's... Uh well, you made the transition from radio. I want to talk about your radio days, too, if you don't mind. Not at all. It's 14 minutes after 11 o'clock. Richard Crenna is on the line. If you have a question for, uh, for Richard, well, I will take some phone calls at 829-2345 or 1-800-322-9377. What do you say to someone who's chemically addicted, especially someone you really care for? Do you tell them how you feel? Do you tell them that alcohol, pot, or pills are taking over their lives? Or do you just let things go on, hoping that the problem will go away? There is a way you can help those you care about. There is an answer. To find out how you can help, call the Chemical Dependence Unit at Brokaw Hospital. Ask them for details about their intervention program. 
Everyone is invited to the first anniversary celebration at the cut above. They're saying thanks for your support with reduced prices on selected dinner menu items. On Thursday, save $2 on their choice New York steak, just $9.95. Or choose their veal Oscar. Two cuts of tender veal, sautéed and topped with crab meat, asparagus, and sauce bernays. A $3 savings at just $10.95. Also, all lunches this month include coffee, tea, or soft drink. Watch and listen for all the exciting first anniversary specials during January at the Cut Above in downtown Bloomington. Intertherm makes the best portable electric heater on the market today. It's the Intertherm hot water heater. Inside the unit is copper tubing that's sealed. Inside the tubing is an antifreeze water solution that never needs to be refilled. Electricity heats the solution and the copper unit heats the room. A thermostat keeps the temperature constant. Talk to your Intertherm dealer today. Your Intertherm dealer in Bloomington is U.S. Electric at 804 South Bunn. We're holding four seats on the WJBC quickly sold out Great Escape to Las Vegas, and you could win two of them. Our charter plane leaves Bloomington Thursday, February 21st, and returns Sunday the 24th. And in between, lie four sunny days in Vegas, accommodations at the Flamingo Hilton, and all the excitement you can soak up. Two winners in our drawing February 15th, each receive two places on the trip. You must be 21 or older to register, and you may do that at good merchants all over McLean County. Yeah, you can register for a free trip to Las Vegas at Nibaki Vacuum Shop, 229 East Front in Bloomington, Carpet Land at 802 El Dorado Road, Bloomington, The Cut Above, 612 North Main, Bloomington, and Citizen Savings and Loan, Normal, Bloomington, Eureka, and El Paso. Richard Crenna is on the line, very talented actor. He's currently in a movie called The Flamingo Kid, and uh, he's being seen at the Eastland Cinemas. You've never done any uh, stand-up comedy or anything like that in front of a live audience, have you, Richard? No, I never have. No, it's... Uh uh, I've had that secret frustration in my life from time to time. I've often thought I wanted to go into some improvisational room and uh, you know hit him with some of my good material, but I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the courage. Yeah, you say that uh, uh, Gail Gordon is doing supper clubs now, huh? Well, Gail Gordon has been just one of the more successful uh, uh, actors uh, touring the country and playing supper clubs and uh, uh, and uh, summer stock theaters all over uh, all over the United States and Canada. He's, mm -hmm. he's done extremely well up in Canada. They uh, they just love him. He fills the building every time he plays. So I love he's been line. doing that. He enjoys it tremendously, and uh, uh, he has always enjoyed that more than working on screen. Mm -hmm. I always love the line from Armis Brooks that he would always deliver that. Oh God! Yeah, right. <laughs> Something he's like that. He's one of the he's one of the great comedy timers of all time. I mean. Yeah. Talk about somebody with a built-in timing mechanism. Uh, Gail was just infallible. I mean, I, I, one of the great uh, one of the great sight jokes in all of television was uh, was a show that we did in which Walter Denton, my character, builds a crystal set radio, and uh, I have the crystal set, and we're at Mr. Conklin's house. We're helping him install a new lanai, a bamboo lanai that he's added to his house, and suddenly on the crystal set we pick up a storm warning. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, as we listen to the storm warning, uh, Mr. Conklin starts to believe what he's hearing. And we go through and it says, you know, we've got to, the only way that this hurricane is coming, and the only way you've got to use, close the windows, pre preferable, preferably with bamboo. And we nail, we take all this bamboo furniture and we nail it against the windows. And the last line from the announcer says, and, and last but not least, do not forget to tether your elephants. <laughs> And he runs out the door. <coughs> I said, where are you going, Mr. Conklin? He says, I'm going outside to tether my elephants. And he runs out, and of course the audience laughed for about four minutes. And at the right moment, he walked back into the room and he said, tether my elephants? <laughs> Getting a, a broadcast from quite a ways away. Yeah. Uh, and we were picking it up from Bangkok. <laughs> That's great. I tell you, that's one show. You know, now with the the advent of cable and all that kind of thing, that we we get to look back at some of the shows we thought were so wonderful, and in some cases they're not. But yeah. Armis Brooks holds up wonderfully today. I think it really does. I must say, I'm uh, I'm hopeful and I'm objective about it. But I look at the show and I really laugh. I I I, uh, I get a terrific kick out of those shows. I think that we did them beautifully, and uh, you know, I the, the cast was just. Marvelous, of course. Eve Arden was was just incredible. Mm -hmm. Who and, played uh, who, who played Mrs. Davis? M Mrs. Davis was uh, uh, Jane Morgan, and Janie was uh, at the time that we were doing it. She must have been oh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Eighty years old. She has passed away. I I think she has passed away. We we talked with Eve Arden probably gee, two, three, four, five years ago maybe. Well, and, uh, you and I are, are still very very close friends. 
friends, and as a matter of fact, I had dinner with her just about three weeks ago. Hmm. And she is just a terrific lady, and uh, we've been very close through all these years. Yeah, Mr. Boynton, I think, is... Uh, I, I think I see Mr. Boynton occasionally on commercials sometimes. Yeah, Bob Rockwell, uh, uh, of course, played played Mr. Boynton on uh, on the television show, and, and a lot of people forgot that uh, for the first five years that we were on radio, Mr. Boynton was played by Jeff Chandler, the movie star. Ah! And uh, always a great credit to Jeff. In the third year of the show, he did Broken Arrow and became a major motion picture star. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, he loved doing the, the uh, Miss Brooks show so much that he did not renegotiate his contract, as you hear so often now. You know, the show is successful, so everybody walks off and asks for more money. Yeah. He continued to play the show at his old salary, and every week, from wherever he was on location, he would fly back to Los Angeles, and on Sunday we would do the radio show, and he would play Mr. Mr. Boynton. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Most of the cast, as you said, with, with the exception of maybe him, actually played on radio as well as TV, didn't yes, they? they did. And that's hard for a transition to, to happen like that. So Very many difficult. There weren't too many shows where that where that happened, really, because uh, uh, obviously in radio you were not restricted uh, physically as to the sort of character you could play. So very often you'd see old men like me playing young boys, <laughs> or you would see uh, you know you would see uh, uh, not so attractive uh, uh, men and women playing handsome leading men and uh, on the on the soaps and so on. And uh, of course it was a wonderful opportunity then because no, nobody felt restricted by their appearance as to what they could or couldn't do. Your voice didn't change from the time you did Walter Denton on our Miss Brooks to when you did Luke on uh, The Real McCoys, did it? No, it was still the same. It was that just... was a character that I created, uh, uh, you know, a pure, pure character at that time. And I think at the time I was playing it, most people thought that was really me. And uh, I guess I have to accept that as a compliment, but it was a little frustrating. Uh, then when I did The Real McCoys and I did Luke, everybody would... That, then it was kind of in retrospect, they appreciated what I did as Walter Denton. They said, you're not the same guy that played Walter Denton. I said, yeah. They said, well, that was a long time. Well, I guess there is something then to this business of being stereotyped. Well, it's, it's, it, it, there, there's no question that uh, that those two roles uh, um, could easily have ended my career, either one of them, uh, if I had not been able to really get out of those characters and get into something else. I, I could very easily have just disappeared from the face of the earth. <laughs> I recently read something that indicated that The Real McCoys was one of those shows that uh, the, the uh, network executives thought would never fly. It That's would perfect. it would pl it would play in the sticks, but it wouldn't it would never catch on. Yeah. Back on it now, we were one of the, uh, I think we were the first show that was ever on ABC television that uh, that got into the top five, and, and uh, we were for a very long time number one show on television. Something like six years, I think. We were on for six years, six seasons, and we did in those days 39 shows a year. So in six years, we did 234 shows. And uh, as an example, uh, MASH uh, celebrated their 200th show in their 10th season. So we did a great many more shows you than, the season, than, uh, than the current shows. Yeah. Uh, we shot them a great deal faster. Uh, and uh, that's another show that I tied. When I look back at The Real McCoys, it holds up today. And I think that if, if the show was in color, uh, we probably would still be on, uh, on television uh, you know, all over the country. There are stations that still run the show, but uh, they don't run it in prime time because of the fact that it's black and white. Yeah, it's hard to believe, though. That was the inspiration for the Andy Griffith Show, Beverly Hillbillies, Petticoat Junction, and Green Acres. So well, so many of the shows, uh, Fred Silverman once paid us a very nice tribute when he was president of ABC, and they were celebrating their, uh, their uh, I forget what it was, 50th anniversary, I guess, and uh, uh, he paid a very nice compliment to the Real McCoys and uh, said that he, in his opinion, the Real McCoys was the forerunner of all the family sort of, of uh, situation comedies that followed. Mm -hmm. It's 20, let's see, you were a... You were divorced during that show, weren't you? Yes. Uh, the person that played Kate yeah. left the show. Well, actually what happened is is uh, 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 Kathy Nolan, who played, who played Kate, did not want to do the sixth season. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we didn't, it wasn't a divorce, it was, it was uh, you know, she passed away. Oh, okay. So Kate, uh, Kate died after the end of the fifth year, and uh, of course in the sixth season, uh, Luke was looking for another wife, and Grandpa was constantly trying to fix him up with a good, strong girl. But uh, uh, when Kathy left, quite honestly, some of the f very important flavor of the show disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it was not the same show after she was gone, because she brought something to the show, and the relationship between Luke and, and Kate was something that was very special to the audience, and they missed her, and we all missed her. It's fun to watch uh, Walter Brennan and Andy Clyde go at it. Oh, God. I tell you, 
Andy, Andy Clyde was, uh, was I, I told my wife, I said, if I ever run away with anybody, it's going to be with Andy Clyde. I absolutely love that man as well as Walter, but Andy was a, a particularly dear human being. He was just the nicest man I think I've ever met in my life. And he used to tell stories about the early days of uh, motion pictures. One of, one of my favorite actor stories was an Andy Clyde story. In the old days, when they were going around in the silence, of course, they carried a suitcase in which they had all sorts of costumes. And they'd have cowboy hats and chaps and uh, dinner jackets and top hats that popped open and all kinds of things. And he went into this office, and he was being interviewed for a particular uh, uh, Western film. And he sat down, and the director looked at him and said, uh, can you ride a Brahma bull? And Andy said, how do you think I got here? <laughs> <laughs> he did a series of shorts, as I recall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Columbia. He was like, uh, kind of like Ben Turpin, you know, the Andy Clyde, the Andy Clyde shorts were, were uh, he never reached the stardom that some of the other uh, silent comedians uh, uh, achieved, but he was just absolutely terrific. Yeah. It's 26 minutes after 11 o'clock. We're visiting with Richard Crenna. We still have a few minutes left. Big fashion savings are happening at Pines. Shop Pines' fantastic sidewalk sale at Eastland and College Hills and save up to 75%. Pines has reduced coats to as low as $40. Dresses start at $15. Sweaters are also priced as low as $15. And blouses start at just $16. These are just a few of the tremendous fashion bargains in store for you at Pines. Coats to warm you up, styles for career, dress, and play. Priced to save you up to 75% through Sunday only. Hurry in for some of the best values of the season at Pines in Eastland Mall and College Hills Mall. Eric's Great Steaks is called Eric's Great Steaks for a reason. For starters, all meat is cut fresh daily at Eric's, then prepared just the way you like it, and served with a smile and just the right amount of attention. And Eric's Salad Bar is a masterpiece, whether you're enjoying it with your meal or as a meal. There's a 10% discount for senior citizens over 60, a special children's menu, and no alcoholic beverages are served at Eric's. If all these things sound like your kind of restaurant, it is. It's Eric's Great Steaks on El Dorado Road, Bloomington, open daily till 10 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 11 p.m. Start the new year looking good the Bard Optical way with a pair of soft contact lenses. Bard Optical can fit you with the latest in soft contacts for only $99 complete. At Bard Optical, complete means no hidden charges, and Bard Optical takes all the worry out of contact lenses. You gotta look your very best, be a cut above the rest. At Bard Optical, you can be. Your eye exam, six months professional care, standard soft contacts, your cold care kit, all for $99 complete. If after 30 days you decide contacts aren't for you, you can trade them in for a pair of prescription glasses. Now you can have contact lenses without the worry and with no hidden charges. At Bard Optical. Ooh, start looking good today. Yeah, yeah. Bard Optical is located on Main Street, just a short walk for Illinois Wesleyan and ISU students. Here's a thought from Thermogas. Use plastic jugs to store dry staples such as popcorn, rice, and macaroni. There will be no torn bags or mess. Thermogas propane furnaces have many money-saving features, including the fact that they are much more fuel efficient. Stop by Thermogas and compare the cost of heating with LP gas over electricity. For Thermogas, see Ray Meyer in Atlanta or Wally Etchison in El Paso. It's 28 minutes after 11 o'clock. Richard Crenn has been on the line. This half hour has just flown by. You know that? Sounds trite to say that. But it, it, hey, I looked at my watch. I couldn't believe you were, you were telling me we were about to go off. Yeah. I, uh, I want to wish you well in uh, an award. You've never won an Academy Award, have you? No, I haven't. The, the, uh, the uh, last time I was nominated for, for uh, any award of any sort was for, uh, by the Golden Globes in 1963 for Slattery's People. Mm -hmm. as well as an Emmy nomination that year for Slattery's People. But from that day to this, I've kind of labored very quietly in the background. Yeah, you see what's happening now. The phone lines are ringing like crazy, and I said I was going to get the phone calls, and I didn't. Would you have time for one quickie? Sure. Uh, whoops, let me see if I can get you on the air. Do you have a question? <laughs> Hello? Am I having a problem here? Hello, anybody there? I think I'm having a problem with the phone line anyway, Richard. Sounds like they're zinging us. Sure does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of feedback out there. Yeah, it was great. Ever since they broke up AT and T. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. This is this has really flown by quickly, and uh, you're up for a Golden Globe Award, as we indicated. I hope you uh, do well in that department. Well, thank you. It's a, it's an honor just to have been nominated. So I I consider myself in excellent company, and I'm thrilled to be there. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun to watch uh, you, as I said, whenever we get a chance to, and. Uh, 
I don't know if you have anything in the works right now or not, but uh, all the best of luck to you. Well, I thank you very much, uh, Ken. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll do this again. I, I'm gonna, I have a picture coming out with Sylvester Stallone. We've just finished the sequel to First Blood. Oh, really? And uh, that'll be coming out sometime in May, and maybe we'll have an opportunity to talk about that. Okay. We'll look forward to it. Terrific. Richard Crenna, thanks much.